There's an idea that a lot of people used to have, especially in the 20th century, that language is capable of expressing everything. There's nothing that you cannot express with language. Um, and I think that most of the people who said that were probably um, quite unsensitive to music. If, if you are sensitive to music, um, as you are if you're sensitive to visual, visual language, um, you know that there's a lot that language cannot express. What is linguistics? What is linguistics? Linguistics is basically the study of human language. The type of linguistics that most people know of uh, is the 19th century version of linguistics, which is the type of questions of like, where did this word come from? Uh, and um, um, how is um, modern Hebrew related to biblical Hebrew? And uh, what's the relationship between Yiddish and German and Russian and so on? And this is a very respectable um, um, kind of thing. Um, today people, I would say, refer to it as historical linguistics. Modern linguistics, in a way, uh, that started with, with De Saussure at the beginning of the 20th century, is an attempt to understand language as a thing, not just words in this language or the other, but that thing called language, the, 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 the enormous entity that is, on the one hand, uh, such an important thing that happens to us socially, on the other hand, it's in our minds somehow. Our minds, as human beings, know how to speak language. Um, uh, so, um, modern linguistics is about that. It's about language as a social thing and about language as a cognitive thing. Uh, in the second part of the 20th century, with Noam Chomsky, the question that became most important was the cognitive one. What is it about human minds, human brains, that allows us to do what we do with language? There's something very, very important in most of the theories of language of the 20th century, uh, and Chomsky is the most important of them. Uh, questions of form and structure uh, are thought of as unrelated to questions of meaning. To, to, to understand what language is, you don't, understand, you don't have to understand what happens when we actually use language for conversation. Chomsky's theory is extremely static, um, universalist, very complex structural thing that has properties like mathematics. Questions of identity do not get into the story at all. Um, language is in our genes. What I'm trying to do in my theory, which is in, in, in this sense a continuation of, of, of traditions, um, oppositionary traditions in the 20th century, is to bring back language to the social domain, uh, to understand that language is a social invention, something that people invented as a group, as a collective, something that is about communication and identity and all that complexity, and that then there is the question of how we as human beings are capable of participating in the social game, and there our brains come into it. Our brains are, are brains that are good for this type of, of activity. Uh, but the essence of language is in society, not in the brain itself. So I guess I've been very much influenced by him, but also um, kind of grew in terms of my biography to be someone who uh, objects very much to what he says. Language, by definition, is something that is bigger than the individual person. Our ancestors managed to make a collective effort of the type that none of them could do on his own or on her own. It's not about us as animals, like individual animals. It's about us as social animals. What these people did was say, okay, this is worthy of a word, and this is worthy of a word, and this we can talk about, and this we cannot talk about, and they arranged a, a, a system that allows us to talk about what they allowed us to talk about. Um, but from time to time, actually always, we, we, we get to points uh, where the social tool that was de developed by those people simply turns out not to be enough. So in the most in the simplest cases, you know, you're talking about n new pieces of technology. This is like trivial. But in a more, in a deeper way, um, there's always a change in what we want to talk about, how we want to talk about it, uh, what types of levels of intimacy we want to, to, to reach. This is, you know, it's most obvious when you talk about sex, for example. Okay, the way you talk about sex, with the, the way kids talk about sex with their friends, the way adults talk about sex, the way you don't talk to your 
to your mother, grandmother or mother about sex and stuff like that, uh, there would be different words, different ways of speaking. Even when you walk with the same, very same person and you talk about something and you, you, you walk from the street to inside a synagogue, something in the way you talk is going to change. It's not just the, the, the loudness. Uh, you're not going to notice, but some words you're going to say or not say and stuff. And people uh, participate in this dynamic from the moment they're born to the moment they die and they, they change all the time. You don't speak the same way when you're 40 as you spoke when you're 20. You don't speak the same way when you're 60. One of the things we can say about ourselves as a, as a species, as a biological species, is that we're extremely sensitive to capturing the identity of the other person on the basis of the way that person speaks. Uh, it's, it's actually a, a survival thing. It's a very important survival thing to know whether this person belongs to our group or doesn't. Is he dangerous or is he a friend? Uh, here in the city, a lot of people who are foreign workers speak uh, certain combinations of, you know, uh, Hebrew and Tagalog, which is the language of the Philippines, uh, Hebrew and Tagalog and English, Russian, Arabic, there's an enormous amount of stuff that is involved there. And this is a reflection of their sense of identity? And this is both a reflection of the sense of identity and a very, very important tool for the construction of their identity. It's, it goes together. You don't, just, you don't just speak the way you do because of who you are. In many ways, you are, you are who you are or who you present yourself to be on the basis of how you talk. Mm -hmm.